Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture. So it's about properties of water and steam. So we have learned the properties of ideal gas last week, and then we have learned the ideal gas equations. So from this week, we are going to learn the properties of water and steam, which I think is more difficult than the properties of the ideal gas. So first of all, I'm going to list in some of these. Uh, learning outcomes that we need to achieve by the end of this topic. So first of all, we need to understand the phase change plot, which is plotted on the TV diagram. So it's not the PV diagram we already get familiar with. So it's another coordinate system. And then, this, then secondly, we need to understand how to determine the properties of wet steam. So what is wet steam? And when we're going to learn this later, the third. We need to be able to use a steam table. Okay, so this is very important. The steam table is a booklet, a small booklet which you can buy.、Uh, you can buy from the from online, and also I already、uh, I already attached a printable PDF file under、uh, on Canvas to find the water steam phases and the thermodynamic properties. Such as enthalpy, by given conditions such as pressure and the temperature. So in most cases, the pressure and the temperature will be given to you, and according to this pressure and the temperature, you need to be able to use a steam table to find other properties. So these two diagrams show the phase change of a pure substance. So when we talk about a pure substance, so water and steam is one example. So it's just some substance which can be described using a fixed chemical composition. So a phase change. When we talk about a phase change, it happens when a substance changes from one phase of matter to another. So we all know that the pure substances have three kinds of phases. So it can be solid, it can be liquid, and also it can be gas. And we know that if we increase the temperature. The solid can change to liquid, and liquid can be changed to the gas. Okay, according to this change process, we can see that the molecular motions are getting more active, and also at the same time, the molecular interactions between are getting weaker and weaker because the distance、uh, between each molecules are getting bigger and bigger. So these are three phases. And we can change from solid, melt to liquid, from liquid evaporate to gas, and also we think about the reverse condition, reverse、uh, process. So the gas can be condensed to liquid, and liquid can be frozen to solid. And all these processes can be driven by energy transfer, such as heat transfer. So. Change phases involve significant changes in internal energy, and then let's think about one way from solid to liquid. So this is called a melting process, and we definitely need to add heat for this process to happen, and we call this process a melting process. And from liquid to gas, again we need to add heat so that the liquid will be evaporated to gas. And we call this process a vaporization process, or sometimes we just call it boiling process. Let's think about it the other way. The gas can be condensed to the liquid, and at the same time, the heat will be rejected during this process. And also, the liquid can be frozen to the solid, during which the heat. Will be also rejected, and we call these two processes condensing process or the freezing process. And during these two processes, the internal energy of the system will be decreased. Now let's think about this a very general、uh, diagram for actually for any pure substance. If we think about how the State or the phase of a pure substance substance change from the liquid to change from the solid to liquid, and then change from the liquid to the vapor, 
what the gas state is. Okay, so this quite looks like quite a complicated uh, diagram, but we're just going to go through one uh, one step. So we have different stages. So we just go through uh, all these stages. So let's think about. We start from uh, the first point. Okay, uh, at this point, the phase of this pure substance is a solid. Okay, so next thing about it, we're going to heat it up. So the solid will receive heat, and the temperature of the solid will increase. Okay, and the volume of this pure sus substance will increase as well because it was a thermal expansion. At the point two, the solid was just about to melt because the temperature reaches uh, it, its melting point. So here, okay, so this is the temperature of the melting. So at this point, two, the solid starts to melt. And the melting process will last quite a long time because the solid cannot be melted to liquid in a very short time. So you need a, a long process. And during this process, we're going to continuous provide heat. So from two to three to four. Okay, so during this stage, we have solid and then we have liquid. So this is a mixture of solid and liquid. So think about we have, if, for example, if we have an ice cube here. Okay, so when ice cube is melting to water, so this here, we have got a mixture of ice cube and water at the same time. The most important thing here is that the temperature during this process from from ice cube to water, the temperature will be kept at a zero degree. Okay, so this is a melting point for the uh, for the water for the cube, what uh, ice cube. At a point four, okay, point four means that all all the solid has just been changed converted melted to liquid here. Okay, so at a point of four, we only have liquid. We don't have solid anymore. And at this point, we still keep heating the system. You can see the temperature now can be increased. At the same time, the volume is also increased due to the expansion of the liquid. And then we get to another point. So this point six here, it's called a boiling point. For example, if, if we have a water system, and at six, to, at the atmospheric pressure, this boiling temperature is about 100 degree. So at 100 degree, the water begins to evaporate. Okay, and then again, this evaporation process will take some time to finish. And during this process, the heat will be continuously added during this process. However, the temperature will be kept at a boiling temperature because this is a phase change process and we can't change the temperature during this process. The, pre the temperature is kept constant until at point 8 here, all the liquid, all the water, for example, has been evaporated into steam. Okay, so at this point, we don't have any liquid left and above this point, if we keep heating this system, the temperature of the temperature of this system will be still be increased, and at the same time, the volume of the system of the gas steam will be can be further increased. So we have eight to line, and we sometimes call this vapor. Okay, so this is a uh, superheated vapor. We call this okay. So basically, this is a general uh, diagram for all the processes, all the processes, including the melting, evap vaporization process. And in this module, we will be uh, especially interested f from liquid to liquid and gas mixture and to the gas superheated, su superheated vapor. So we're more interested in this part. So now we have a few pages just to summarize what I have just explained uh, from process 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So what will happen uh, during all these processes. 
So this is another page explaining what will be happening during these different processes. And finally, the process 7 to 8 and 8 to 9. So as I said, this is quite a general uh, process ch process changes, uh, uh, including phase changes. So any substance undergoing a change of phase from one solid to liquid, liquid to vapor, will, will just follow quite a similar general uh, general way uh, as, as we just discussed. However, it might happen at a different temperatures and different volumes. Okay, on this slide, I'm just going to explain further about how the phase changes happen uh, for the water if we're going to heat the system continuously. So, I think this, this process can be better understood if we uh, just have some imagination that we're, we're going to do experiment here. Okay, so this is how an experiment look like. So basically, we will have a cylinder and a piston system. And we will have one kilogram of water just inside that system. And because the piston is leak is leak tight, means that there's a low mass leakage. So this is a closed system, and the mass inside the system is fixed as one kilogram. And we have a look at the balance of that piston. Okay, if we do a force balance on that. So we, we know that once the piston is in, is in an equilibrium condition, means that the pressure inside here, okay, times air, the area of the piston will be just equal to the weight of, of that piston. So if the weight of that piston is fixed, and then the pressure is also inside the system is also fixed, okay, so that we can adjust the weight of that piston. So make sure that we are doing the experiment under an atmospheric pressure. And during this heating process, no matter what happens in here, so the pressure inside this system will be kept as atmospheric pressure. So this is very important. Also, let's imagine that we have some scalings, we have some scales here, okay, so which makes it possible for us to measure the volume of that system at any point. And also, if we have any thermocouple ins inserted in that system and then we can measure the temperature of that system at any time of the experiment. So now we can have a full record of the temperature and also the volume changes according to this heating process and we can plot all these data points on the temperature and also specific volume axis. Okay, so we can find points here, okay, from a starting point, for example. So at the starting point, let's assume that we have a, a one kilogram water, okay, inside there, and the initial temperature is about 20 degree here, 20 degree. So we found that we are 10, 20 degrees here, and if we assume that the specific volume at that starting point is around 0 0.001 cubic meter per kilogram. So now we know the location of our starting point, point 0.1 here. So now we're going to heat this system up. As you can imagine that the temperature inside that system will be increased. Okay, so will be increased from 20 to 100 degree. From 1 to 2. So during this heating process, the temperature obviously is increasing from 20 to 100. And also actually the volume of that system is also increased due to thermal expansion, because this is a liquid, due to thermal expansion. So there will be a very small increase of that specific volume until the temperature is achieved at 100 degree, which is a boiling temperature at atmospheric pressure. So from point two now, okay, from point two, the water just starts to evaporate. And we call this condition point two. We give it a special name. We call it saturated water. Okay. So now the temperature will be get will be constant during this evaporation process. Okay, because this is a phase changing process. Okay. 
and during this phase changing process, we know that the temperature will be get constant. However, as a part of the water will be converted, will be turn, evaporated to steam, and we know that this is a fixed mass here. It's one kilogram. Okay, one kilogram, and you know the density of that steam is much smaller than the density of that liquid, which makes the volume of the whole system much bigger during this phase change, but uh, phase change process. So you can see from two to three. Three to four, okay. Although the temperature is kept at one hundred degree, however, the volume has a big change, big increase. The volume, and at the middle middle point three, so this is a mixture, the mixture of water and steam. And if we keep heating it, more and more water will evaporate into steam. And finally, at point four, all the water just evaporated into steam. So at that at that this critical point, we actually don't have any water left in that system. We only have steam. So we give it also we give it a special name. We、we'll、call this saturated vapor. So if we call this a platform, okay. So on the left hand side, number two, I just mentioned we call this saturated water state, and on the right hand side of that platform, number four. We、we'll、call it such as vapor point. Okay, so after point four, if we still provide heat to that system, and the temperature and also the volume of that system can be even increased. So you can see here, the volume can be even higher. The temperature three hundred can also be even higher, and we call this the phase of this water. We、we'll、call this dry vapor. Or we give it a name as superheated. Okay, superheated vapor. Now, as you can see, that this is the whole heating process. Okay, and this, during this heating process, the water changes. The water, the water changes from twenty degree. Okay, so initially, it has a heating process up to the one hundred degree. So from one to two is a steep increase, and from one to two is liquid. It's still liquid. Okay, so once it reaches its boiling point from two to four, okay, we call this region wet paper, wet vapor, or wet steam. We call it wet steam because the steam has some kind of water inside, so it's wet. So we give it a name as two to four. We call this wet steam, and above four, above four, we call it superheated, superheated vapor or superheated steam. Okay, on this slide, I'm just going to conclude some findings from the experiment, as we can imagine. Okay, so we, from the experiment, we do a continuous heating process, so that the water will be evaporated into vapor. Okay, so this is a TV diagram. So y x y axis as a temperature, and x axis we use a specific volume. And we're especially interested、uh, about the pro in the process of the phase changes from a liquid to a vapor. So on this TV diagram, we have some very important concepts and terms defined here. So first of all, we need to understand that this line is called constant pressure line. Okay, because this experiment is performed. Under a fixed atmospheric pressure, and we have a steep increase followed by a platform, followed by a further increase. Okay, and at this platform, the temperature is kept constant. So this is basically the boiling temperature, and also we can call it saturation temperature in this module. And at the left hand side. Left end, okay, the starting point here. According to that platform, number one. So give it a name. We call this saturated liquid, saturated liquid status. And at the right hand side of that platform, number two here, we also give it a name as a saturated vapor status. 
and then we have three phases. Okay, three phases. So before point one here, so this is liquid. Okay, and from one to two, so we have a mixture. We have a mixture and a vapor. So we call this wet vapor or wet steam. And any point on the right hand side of that two, we call it superheated vapor. So this slide uh, summarizes some of these uh, very important concepts according to that TV diagram. So the fluid at state 1, where 100 liquid just about to evaporate, is referred as to a saturated liquid. And the state at, and the fluid at number 2, so at that point, all the liquid just 100% of liquid just evaporates to vapor. So we only have 100 vapor here, and all liquid just have completed evaporation. And this point is referred to as the saturated vapor point. And the temperature at which evaporation uh, takes place is known as a saturation temperature. Or you can think just it's a boiling temperature if it's as easy for you to understand. And in thermodynamics, this is very important. Okay, so we have different subscripts. We use F. Okay, so F properly stands for fluid. So we use F. We give that subscript, especially to the saturated liquid. And then we use G. So you can think G stands for gas. It's like a vapor. Okay, so G is especially used for that saturated vapor. So for example, we have Vf and Vg. So V stands for the specific volume, and F is for saturated liquid. So that's specific volume of saturated liquid. And for Vg, so it means that specific volume of the dried, dry saturated vapor. So G stands for vapor and F stands for liquid. So we're going to use F and G a lot of times in this module. All right. On this slide, I'm going to show you a small uh, video, which I think is quite interesting. So if for any reason you can't, uh, you can't click that button to, to watch that video, I would suggest to you that you, uh, you just put this why you can't boil eggs on mountain Everest into the search box in the YouTube or you just can click that YouTube uh, link to watch this video and now I'm going to play Which we climbed up at the beginning, we are at 8848 meter. 
there the water boils already at around 70 degrees Celsius. So the yolk might get hard, but the white outside will stay edible and we can't enjoy our egg. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, then make sure to click the like button and share this video on social network. Right, okay, I'm just going to stop here. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, the reason I'm using this uh, video is just to want to say one thing actually. So, you, as you understand, that at the top of the, uh, a high mountain such as uh, Mount Everest, the pressure on the top of the mountain is very low. Okay, and this lower pressure will lead, will lead to a, a low boiling temperature for the water as well. Okay, or sometimes it will cause this saturation temperature. This is because if we have the lower pressure, and then the the temp uh, the water will be boiled at a much lower temperature. Right. Okay. So if you can still remember that experiment which we used to to measure the temperature and the volume of that heating process for an atmospheric pressure. So if you still remember that, uh, the shape of the file. Of the shape of the process looks like that okay a steep increase and then a platform and also then a further increase okay and we call this a constant pressure 9 right so this is basically the experimental findings at a fixed pressure now let's think about that we can uh, increase the weight of that piston so that the pressure so that experiment can be performed on the different values of pressure. So it can be uh, the experiment, so similar experiments can be done uh, on a lower pressure and also at a high pressure. And we will find we will find out that all these curves will look very similar. Okay, so they all have a, a steep increase here, they have a platform here, and they have a further increase here. And as we uh, we learned from that uh, uh, YouTube video that on the top of the uh, high mountain, when the pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure, we know that the temperature, of the, uh, the boiling temperature is lower. So, the, the, so from that, you will know that the pressure line, which is the lower pressure line, will sit beneath. Okay, so this is uh, from the bottom to the top, when we increase pressure, the curves are moving upwards. As you can see, under uh, each constant, pressure curve okay we all have a saturated vapor saturated water point here and we have a saturated vapor point here and at another pressure we also have a saturated water and I have a saturated vapor so so on the uh, lower pressure line we have a saturated water here we saturated we have a saturated vapor points here okay so if you assume that we just connect all these saturated water points, okay, and then we will get a blue line. So this blue line will just represent all the saturated liquid states. And similarly, if we collect all these saturated vapor points here, okay, then we will get a red line. So the red line represents a saturated vapor line. Okay, so if we have these two lines, red line and, and the blue line, then we will get a, a dome shaped. And underneath this dome, we call it a vapor dome. So this re represent a mixture, okay, a mixture of liquid and vapor. On the left hand side of that blue line, so this region, we know that the this region is only for liquid only, okay. And on the right hand side of that red line, so here, okay. So any state num state points on this region represent this is a superheated, okay, superheated vapor. And then when the pressure is increasing, and at a top point, okay, we call this is a critical point. So the pressure here is a critical point, cr critical pressure. Okay, so this slide just summarizes some of the nodes which are which are interesting according to this TV diagram. Okay, so first of all, we can see that 
the saturation temperature increases as the pressure increases. So you can see we, if you still remember that video, we show that if the pressure is decrease, decreasing, okay, and according to that pressure, the saturation temperature, which is the boiling temperature, is actually lower than the pressure at a higher, lower than the temperature at a high pressure. So this is the first point. The second point says that the specific volume of the saturated liquid VF increases as the pressure increase, the VG decreases as the pressure increases. So we can compare two pressures here. So which one is the atmospheric pressure here? And then we have a higher pressure, P2. Okay, so when the pressure from here to there, when the pressure increases, you can see that the points on this blue line which represent VF, okay, VF is a specific volume of the saturated liquid. So if you have a higher pressure, then the VF is actually moving to the right. Okay, it means that the VF also increases when the pressure increases. However, if you have a look at the VG, so if the pressure increase, the VG is moving to the left, means that the VG is decreasing when the pressure increases. So now you can see that VF is moving along the blue line to here, and VG is moving from the red line to here. And finally, they're going to meet together at the top point, and we call this point as a critical, critical point. So this happens when the pressure is very high. So let's think about if you have even higher pressure than that critical point, critical pressure. So the pressure line will look like that, okay. So we call, actually we call this as a supercritical condition. So this happens at a very high pressure, and at this pressure there's no definite transition from liquid to vapor, and the two phases cannot be visually distinguished, so basically you cannot identify the phase. So uh, which phase is that? Is that a liquid or is that a vapor? So it's very difficult to, to identify if the pressure is higher. And the critical point. And the phase of the water will depend on the pressure and the volume of, of, and the temperature. So we need to find out the pressures, the pressure, volume, and the temperature before we can decide the phase of that water. So is it liquid, or is it a super, superheated vapor, or is it just a wet vapor? So here again, so this is a definition of the enthalpy. We mentioned this earlier in the previous lecture. So the enthalpy, this is a definition. So the enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy plus pressure times the volume. Or in specific terms, we have the lowercase h, which is equal to lowercase u plus p times lowercase v. Okay, so this is very important, especially when uh, for the for the next week, when we're going to learn the uh, open system. So enth enthalpy is most often used for for the open systems. So as you can see, because this term u plus p v appears very often. Okay, so it's very convenient that it will give another name called enthalpy H. So we're going to learn this later when we learn open system in, for, in the following weeks. Okay, here's just also another very important uh, concept here. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, so now you, you, you are just getting more and more familiar about this uh, TV diagram, including the, the dome shape, okay, blue line, red line. So this just shows one constant volume. Okay, so we have A here at the left hand side of that platform. And we have C here, so this is what we call that, saturated water, saturated liquid. And C, we call it saturated steam or saturated vapor. So above C, we call this superheated, okay. And here, because it has not, melt, it has not evaporated yet, so this is still water. So that's water, superheated steam, so how about in between? So we call this wet vapor, 
We call this wet vapor because there's some wet water inside the steam. So that's actually a mixture of steam and water. Okay. So if we think about this uh, curve from C up to here, okay. So if I give, if I tell you the, the temperature of that water, for example, the temperature is here, and according to that temperature, you can get the volume, specific, specific volume, immediately, okay. And for the liquid as well, if I tell you the the temperature of that liquid, so coordinate you can find the volume. A specific volume of that liquid. However, during this wet vapor region, if I'm telling you the temperature, which is a boiling temperature, okay, you can't tell actually what's the volume of that system because the temperature from A to C is exactly the same. Okay, so if I say, uh, can we decide the volume, specific volume of that point B here? So we'll give it a name because during the process from A to C is a wet vapor, so we give it a wet. So that's a specific volume for the wet vapor, okay, B here. So to decide the specific volume for B, we do need another variable to define, to find out how to define the specific volume of that B, because B can be here, can be here, or can be here. So here, this is a very important uh, concept. As I said, uh, so we uh, we have a mixture. Okay, for that mixture, we have a mixture of liquid and vapor. Here, so we just assume that uh, we have a total one kilogram of uh, sample of working fluid. So that's a mixture. Okay, if we have one kilogram of mixture, then we can assume that x kilogram is here, okay, x kilogram is saturated vapor, and 1 minus x is saturated liquid. So if we add them together, so we get 1 kilogram. So that's altogether 1 kilogram of wet vapor, and we only have x kilogram for saturated vapor. Okay, so now we can have a equation. So the volume, the total volume of the vapor is equal to the mass of the vapor, which is x kilogram, okay, times the specific specific volume of that saturated vapor. And as you know, we use Vg for that. And the volume of liquid, similarly, we can get this is a mass of that liquid times the specific volume of that saturated liquid, which is a Vf. Okay, so if we add this one and that one, we will get the volume of that mixture. So the volume of the one kilogram mixture is equal to one kilogram times the specific volume of that wet vapor here. So that we get this equation. So the, this equation shows that the wet vapor, the specific volume of that wet vapor is equal to one subject x times Vf at x times vg. So this is a very, very important formula. We're going to use this formula a lot of times to decide the properties, not only just for the specific volume, actually. So on this slide, I just listed the equations for calculating the wet vapor. So these are the internal specific, internal energy, specific enthalpy, and S stands for the specific entropy. Okay, so these are all for the wet vapor, and they actually we just use very very similar forms of that formula. Okay, by just changing use. So we're actually using use here, and then we use H here. That's that these are the S. Okay, so we just use a very similar equation, just as if we were calculating the wet vapor. We're calculating the specific volume of that wet paper. So we're using 1 subtract x times uf plus x times ug, for example, for this case. And the property here, x, is known as the dryness fraction. So this is a very important variable, variable and to describe 
sometimes we call this quality of that vapor. So this de describes how much, uh, how much saturated vapor in that uh, mixture. So this X is defined as the mass of that saturated vapor inside the wet vapor. So this is a mass fraction of that vapor out of the total mixture. So once the dryness fraction is given for a wet vapor, and then we can use a steam table to find out all these values. So these are the internal energy enthalpy. Okay, so we can use a steam table to find all these variables, and then by give by giving uh, dryness fraction for that vapor, we can calculate. We can use these equations to calculate. Uh, those properties for the wet vapor. So this slide just shows some other uh, alternative, actually alternative equations. So uh, you probably can find these equations used to calculate uh, the internal energy enthalpy and entropy of that wet steam using another form of equation here, okay? So you probably can find it in some other references. They're actually the same, they're exactly the same as the equations listed in the previous slide, okay? So here, actually from here, from point A to point B, so the process is from a saturated water process, saturated water state to a saturated vapor state. So we think about the heat transfer during this process from A to B. So the heat transfer delta Q is just equal to the change in the specific enthalpy from A to B. And A we have HF and B we have HD. So here we can write the heat transfer during this process is equal to the difference between HG and HF. And we can define this HFG, which is the difference between the HG and HF. So then we finally will get the heat transfer during this process. Okay, so this actually evaporation process is equal to HFG. We'll give it a name here for HFG. So this is a very important uh, term. It's called latent heat of vaporization and is a measure of the heat transfer required to evaporate a substance from a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. Okay, so it depends. Uh, so this is a property, so it depends on different uh, fluid. So different fluid has different latent heat of, of vaporization. And so it's, uh, it's also, okay, uh, what I'm going to show later is that the value of HFG is also included in the steam tables. Okay, so here comes the steam tables. So by using the steam table, according to, especially important is that, according to the pressure of that fluid, we can use that steam table to find out a lot of other properties, such as the specific volume, internal energy, and enthalpy. So it all depends on the pressure of the fluid. And I'm going to use another video to show that how to use a steam table because it's difficult to, sh uh, to show you here using PowerPoint. So I'm going to give you another video showing that how we're going to use the steam tables de uh, depending on different pressure, how are we going to find out all these properties here. So in this